purposes of questioning the witness at today's subcommittee hearing. And with that, Mr. Burleson is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chairwoman, for holding this hearing. I think this is an extremely important topic. Um, what's, I, and I want to reiterate the words of our colleague from Wisconsin. What's happening in our universities is insane. Uh, it's almost a de-evolution of thought that, is, that has occurred in Western culture for thousands of years um, uh, from, political philosopher, from philosophers like Plato to Descartes to Bacon, that, that what's in your mind is not necessarily reality and the truth. And you can believe all day long in one thing. It doesn't mean that it's so. And so it's almost like our, our, this, this nation and this, and this attitude that we want to we throw out all of this conventional thinking for, for centuries is really going to be the undoing of this nation. Um, but if you want to know where this administration stands, all you have to do is look at the position statement um, from President Biden. He said, and I quote, let's be clear, transgender equality is the civil rights issue of our time. There's no room for com compromise when it comes to basic human rights. There's no room for compromise? That's pretty, that's a very definitive statement. Um, Mrs. Gaines, wh what would you say to those that claim that there's no room for compromise when it comes to men competing in women's sports? That statement, um, I'm just, truthfully, I'm not even honestly sure what that would entail. In terms of compromise from women, uh, I don't believe we should have to compromise anything. Uh, we should be, and this is what Title IX's original intent was, uh, we should be entitled to competing on the basis of sex and without facing discrimination. But again, what myself and my teammates and my competitors and girls around the country, high school level, college level, continue to face is blatant discrimination on the basis of our sex. Yeah, I can tell you, I'm a father of two girls who both participated in sports. And I'll tell you, when you're the parent on the sidelines and you're watching, you, the competitive you know, every, all that nature flows. And when you see an injustice occur, you know, whether it's teams that are having children that are older than your kids, you know, being, playing, or in the, and sometimes I will never forget, for, for many years, boys and girls were equal, especially in soccer, right, which my girls competed in. But there was a point in which it was no longer the case. And as a parent, and all the parents on the sidelines, we would actually count the number it, especially in, still in co-ed, we would count the number of boys and determine that's, you know, which team is probably going to win. And, there, and so it was nice whenever they were able to actually hit an age where they were able to compete against other girls and other women. Um, but sadly, this, that's why everybody who sees what's happening knows that this is injustice. Anyone who is a parent who sees what's happening knows this, that this is an injustice. In fact, a survey of parents in the United States concluded that 70% of parents do not think that this is a good idea, and yet we're doing it, and so, or, or that it's being done at our university levels. Um, and of course, if you object, you're considered trans, you know, transgressive or transphobic, um, and you're effectively canceled. Mrs. Russell, you were effectively canceled for standing up for female athletes on your team, what would you say to others in a similar position who are wondering whether or not they should speak out? I would still suggest that everybody speak up because it's because of silence that this continues. Um, there are, the amount of support I received once I went public, um, the number of emails, direct messages, phone calls, all was positive. Everything on social media was positive in support of this position that girls and women's sports needs to stay female only. Well, Ms. Russell, thank you for your courageous stand. I, we, appreciate, we appreciate that. I, I just want to say, you know, to, to Mrs. Gaines, what happened to you was, is tragic. I mean, the, what, you were robbed of your, the glory, you were robbed of your opportunity to... Um, to be clearly the victor, and it's, if, if it weren't so tragic, it would be comical. I mean, and I understand there's a movie being made, the comedy about this very issue 
um, that on the Daily Wire that I can't wait to see. I encourage everyone to watch it. Um, and truthfully, I think that's what's needed. Uh, because what we're seeing, again, what myself and my teammates and my competitors saw was a mockery, a mockery of women. Uh, and I believe it's time we mock the mockery through comedy, because you're right, it's objectively funny. Uh, it, it's inherent to, to almost look at this and laugh because it feels like satire. Uh, but watching that movie, uh, to which I watched, uh, it didn't feel like satire, it felt like a documentary of what, again, myself and girls around the country continue to go through. Thank you, my time has expired. Thank you, the chair now recognizes